Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at points on the PPF curve and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. Okay, so one thing that economists are going to be generally quite interested in is knowing how much an economy can produce with its existing resources. So let's say that we have an economy and they have this selection of resources and these are our limited resources. So this is all the resources that we have in our economy. And then using these resources, we will want to know how much our economy can produce. It's kind of part of the first step to working out how to allocate resources by knowing how much we have to allocate. And there is a way in which economists start to visualize how many goods are available in an economy. And we represent the different amounts of goods that can be produced in an economy on a production possibility frontier or a PPF curve. Sometimes you see it as a PPC, which is a production possibility curve, and sometimes you just see it as a PPF curve. So the definition of production possibility frontier, or PPF, shows the maximum potential output of a combination of goods and services in an economy which can achieve in a given amount of time when all its resources are being used efficiently. So what does this mean by efficiency? Well, it's a state in which the economy is making optimal decisions so that maximization of production is achieved. So in effect, efficiency almost translates to the economy is doing as best as it can. So when we draw a PPF curve for the whole economy, so we're not looking at individual goods, we're looking at the economy as a whole, then on the x-axis we think about consumer goods and the y-axis we label as capital goods. So we have brought up the topic of capital and consumer goods in the past. So it was previously mentioned that these two are substitutes of sorts. So capital goods will give you more consumer goods in the future and consumer goods will give you some kind of consumer goods now. And we will see furthermore how they are substitutes using our PPF curves. So there are two ways in which we will draw out our PPF curves. The most common is having this bowed out shape from the origin. So we have this curve coming outwards and it's sloping down. And then we also have a straight line also going down. This is how economists are going to think about their PPF curves. Now what we can see by the shape of these curves is that as the number of consumer goods produced increases, the number of capital goods produced decreases as well. So remember that these two graphs are for the whole economy. So this is the production for our entire economy using all of the resources available to us within the economy. So the basic shape is that as the number of consumer goods is increasing, so we're moving across this line, then the number of capital goods is decreasing. And we can see this really explicitly on our downward sloping line where there's a constant decrease of capital goods, whereas the PPF curve, we're seeing different levels of decreasing rates of capital goods. Now it's also worth noting that there are other uses for our PPF curves and we can draw PPFs for other purposes. For example, any two products or any two categories of products. So for example, houses or vehicles, or maybe more simply outputs of manufactured goods and outputs of services. So these are just good examples to see how we can have this sort of trade-off between the two different goods. And therefore we can see that we can have a number of different axes where we draw PPF curves. But in economics, we're typically drawing PPF curves for the whole economy, where the axes are going to be about capital and consumer goods. And if you can see up here, remember I said that capital and consumer goods, they are sort of like substitutes. Well, you can see that we are trading one off for the other as we are choosing to increase the production of one. So if we are to be on our PPF curve, we can't have both at the same time. So we can't increase both at the same time. We have to choose how much we want of either, which will lead to an increase or a decrease of one of them. Okay, so now we're going to move on to understanding our PPF curve in a little bit more depth by understanding what the different points on our curve are to let us read our curves better so we can get some sort of insight. So we know that the production possibility frontier is going to show the maximum potential output of the economy, assuming all given resources are being used. So we have resources within our economy and it's pretty logical or rational to think that we'll use those resources for some sort of production of goods. How close we are to the maximum potential of that production is going to be what we are interested in. So let's imagine that a firm draws a PPF to show the relationship between the output of manufactured goods and services, which is a downward sloping PPF curve as we saw before, so we have to trade one off for the other. 
Now, there are points that are actually on the PPF curve, which are said to be economically or productively efficient. So every single one of these points here is described as being productively efficient. Therefore, the resources are being used efficiently too. What it further means as well is that all of our available resources are being used as efficiently as possible to produce the maximum potential output. So what this translates to is that everything in our economy is being used to a point in which we are making and producing everything that we possibly could and we can no longer produce any more. So we understand now why it's called a production possibility frontier. Frontier being this is the edge of in which we can produce. So we can't produce anymore. We're at that frontier because we are producing the maximum potential output. So we would still say the economy is producing efficiently even if the firm produced at point A with no services or point D which also has no manufactured goods, they would still be described as efficient as the resources are being used to their full potential. So at these different points here, even though we have a production of none of the other goods, so here with manufactured goods there are no services and then there are no manufactured goods at point D, we would still say that they are producing productively efficient levels because that's their maximum output. And the best way that we can see that is because they're actually on the curve itself. Furthermore, all points that are within the PPF curve, so every point here, EG and F, that's within this curve, so it's towards the origin to the left-hand side of the curve, these are all possible points in which we can produce that. And therefore, we would describe them as being obtainable. So they're all levels of production in which the economy can produce that. However, this is not the most efficient point in which we can produce because we are not actually on our curve. So we are leaving some resources unemployed or left over. And hence, it is inefficient because we are not producing to our maximum output. So we're not doing the best that we can. So these resources are being used inefficiently and there are unemployed resources within the economy which could be used to produce more output. So the fact that we can go a little bit further and move towards our PPF curve if we use some more of our resources is what we're trying to get at. And the final point to consider is any points that are outside of the PPF curve. So we have point H here and these are unobtainable or unfeasible points with the current resources available. So remember our PPF curve is essentially a pathway to understanding all of what we can do within an economy. It's a plan, we can't do anything more than this at the moment given the resources we have available. So point H, these are unobtainable points. It's simply not feasible because we don't have enough resources to even produce that much services and manufactured goods at any given point in time with the resources we have. So the combination of resources leads to this level of production of output of services and manufactured goods. So imagine that this curve is just a selection of different bundles or combinations of services and manufactured goods that we can produce with our resources and H is beyond that. So we are never gonna be able to produce that in any case. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.